I have been affected by uh, many men of God, women of God, word of God, power of the Holy Spirit. Dr. James Morocco, who is our senior global pastor and has been my pastor for just about 30 years almost going on. If you want the exact date, just ask Pastor Karen. Uh, shared something early on when I was a part of our church. I really got saved here. Karen got saved here many, many years ago. When I say here, I don't mean here in Alaska at this particular church building, but what I mean at this church. We are one church in many locations, over 400 different locations or congregations, should I say, around the world. We're pushing to hit 1,200. How many? 1,200 by 2025, 1,200 churches around the world. <clears throat> and in those early days when he shared about a dream, the, the actual fact is he doesn't know if it's a dream or a vision because it just blends and he can't recall. A dream is when you're sleeping. A vision is when you're awake. I've had both. Perhaps you have also. Uh, I seem to be dreaming more than I have ever dreamed in my life. And, uh, but I also have vision, so I guess that would make me middle-aged. <laughs> Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. <laughs> All right. And in this dream that has marked Dr. Morocco's life, and as he shared it, how many of you know you can go through things in your life, and when you testify, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, that when you testify, you share your experience, it can mark other people. So in his testimony about his dream slash vision, because he doesn't recall which one it was, he shares this story, and it marked me, and you won't understand our church unless you understand the gravity of what I'm about to share with you and the dream and the vision that he had because it, is, it drives us. It is at the core of really who we are. The dream simply is Dr. Morocco is before the throne of God. It's over. The end has come, and he's there at the judgment seat of Christ. And as he's at that judgment seat, the Lord says to him, what happened? Why didn't you do what I asked you to do? And Dr. Morocco says, I, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the staff. I didn't have the people. I didn't have the buildings. Lord, I didn't, I didn't have them. And the Lord says to him, didn't you know that I would have helped you if you tried? That is at the core of who Kings is. We tried. And Dr. Morocco's fear, and when I say fear, the fear of the Lord fell on Dr. Morocco. It drives him. He's the hardest working person I've ever met. He does not stop. People have come through to say, you need to get a hobby. So we, could, we have a hobby in the millennium. In the millennial reign, we can have a hobby then. Time to work while it's light. He is driven, 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 driven man. And thank God for Pastor Colleen because she helps him, you know, dial back, make sure he takes care of the family, take some time off. He's taking time off now in the lower 48, preaching 35 times. A man by the name of Mike Bickle, he's the founder of the International House of Prayer, is uh, who we had the joy of meeting and spending time with a number of years ago. Um, when he was in his early 20s, he was a pastor, I think, for six years. As he recalls and tells the story, he had been wholehearted for God for six or seven years. That's different than just going to church. How many of you know that's a little bit different? It's a lot different than just showing up, naming the name of Jesus, going to church even once or twice a week. Being wholehearted is, is actively seeking him, seeking first his kingdom, fully leaning in and engaging in the things of the Lord. So he had been living like that for the Lord for 
some six or seven years. And he has a dream that turned into a vision, as I recall him sharing and as I've read the story. And he's before the throne also. And as he's before the throne, the Lord says to him, your life was wasted. You wasted your life. And I don't know if you can relate to this, but there wasn't an expression of words right at that moment between him and the Lord. But, but many times communication in, in the heavenly realm has nothing to do with you opening your mouth. It can just be thoughts, just go back and forth. Just there's a, there's a speaking back and forth even though you didn't say anything. You're saying something. So in his mind, he says, what? You must have it wrong because I've been going after God for six or seven years. You know, I've been going after God with all my heart. And the Lord thunders from his throne and says, you cannot manipulate the Son of Man. In other words, what God says about you is true, whether you agree with it or not. In his mind, my life's not wasted. My life is just on fire. My life's not wasted. Man, I'm going after God. My life's not wasted. I'm reaching the lost. I'm healing the sick. I'm setting the captives free. No, the Lord said to him, your life is wasted. I'm in your notes in the intro. I went fishing, and I had a dream. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm all right. I'll be right back, I think. So in the dream... I'm standing with all of y'all, a massive amount of people. I could just see a few that's in front of me, indescribable faces, but well, there we are. And I know that it's over. I know the end is here. It's over. And in the moment of knowing the end was upon us, I instinctively being trained by the word and by the grace of God in my dream, I check myself. Like, am I, am, I, am, I, am I good? Am I good? Do I have anything? God, Lord, Lord, Jesus, I search to see if I have anything that I need to correct before the end is upon us. He shows me some things. I, I kind of go into another dream, which would not be for sharing right now, and I'm instantly back. And a bright, shining light from the east comes. And I close my eyes, and it gets brighter and brighter, and whoosh, when I go to heaven. So I'm in some section of heaven. And as I'm there, I'm standing there, and what I believe to be an angel, but it wasn't like a normal angel you would read in Scripture, comes to me with a orb of oil and fire. <sighs> like a pearl. Looks at me and pushes it at me and hits me, goes into my spirit and changes me. Some, some profound change takes place. And then I'm before all of these people that are on a, like choir risers. I can see all of their faces. And as I look, I see assignments being passed out. And I know that it's assignments for the millennial reign. And I see one person standing there and this pearl, oil, fire, orb goes into them and I see the entire continent of Africa and I see the listed nations that are there and I see the divine assignment for this person. And it was all very intense. That's my dream that I'm allowed to tell you. 
that part. I wake up and I'm, I'm affected. Three in the morning, four in the morning, and I pray and kind of, I want to go back into the dream. And I realize I'm going to have a series of dreams. I know that I'm going to have a series of dreams. A couple days later, back out of the rain, back home, I wake up and the Lord speaks very clearly to me and says, the end is the beginning. First Corinthians chapter 3, take your Bibles, turn there, take a big deep breath, you're like, man, it's intense, I know, well, it's an intense time. First Corinthians, would you stand with us, please? Reading from the New International Version. No, I'm going to go the New King James. First Corinthians 3, if you're able to stand, stand. We just do that for the honor of, in honor of God's word. If you're not able to, I understand. First Corinthians 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can be laid, can anyone lay, than that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire. Father, thank you for your word that truly is a lamp unto a feet, a light upon our path. Move in great power the moments that remain here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So the dreams affected me. I, uh, you know, we've been in this series called Don't Fall, and I would encourage all of you, I think I have one more message to bring to that, although this, I suppose, could fall into this series but I'm not going to put it there because I know I'm in queue for a series of dreams. And so uh, I'm starting a new series based on the dreams. And please understand, the dreams are not the foundation. The Word of God is the foundation, but the dreams will guide and direct what I feel like the Lord is going to say to us. I give no promise to say that it'll be on Sunday mornings. I have no idea when it'll be. And uh, welcome to Kings. We're a spirit-led church, and, uh, and we love the Word of God, and so going to teach you about that, starting a new series called The End is the Beginning. The End is the Beginning. Message one. I thought I would call it gems, because it just seemed cool, the gems and jewels and But Pastor Karen reminded me that gems is spelled with a G. And that doesn't really work because I'm going to preach on what I feel like the Lord is emphasizing, which is this. Divine judgments, divine rewards, and divine assignments. And you know, in, in Christianity, a lot of people don't, they don't, they don't talk about, they don't talk about the judge. Judgment seat, I'm going to tell you, across America, there will not be too many that are talking about the judgment seat of Christ. Because it's not all warm and fuzzy uh, on one view. But if you really understand what judgment seat or bema seat, we'll get into it here in a minute, what that really means is it really is the place of rewards. See, because for the believer, I thought, I thought, we, I thought we're not going to get judged. Oh, no, you're going to get judged, honey. Turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 6. In Hebrews chapter 6 and towards the end, so we'll, we'll move in this series. The end is the beginning. 
if you haven't partaken of the past two messages on don't fall, I would strongly recommend, let me say that again, I would strongly recommend that you go look at those because men and women are falling at an unprecedented rate and in actual fact, uh, I was told that statistically that there's only 10 out of 100 that will finish the race that God's marked out for them. So that means 90% will fall away. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1, listen to this scripture. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. How many of you went to elementary school? Okay, they teach math a little bit different right now, but I'm not so sure it's working well. Pretty sure it isn't. So if you think about what you learned in elementary, right? Elementary or the or essential learning blocks, right? Elementary school. So he says, leaving the elementary, leaving the elementary teachings or elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Are you all there? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, number one. Number two, faith toward God. Number three, doctrines of baptism. Baptisms. Number four, the laying on of hands. Number five, resurrection of the dead. And number, number six, eternal judgment. So in Christendom, when you become a Christian, these are some things you need to learn about. You need to learn about repentance. You need to learn about baptism. You need to, these are elementary things. Some of you want to go on to the deep things. You don't even set a, you even set a foundation. You know, our, the, the foundation stones, I'll, I'll call it that, of our church are serious. Our new building. They, they are, I mean, they're profound. I never forget when, was it 80? 87, thank you, Wally. 87 foundation stones we, which we poured, and they are they're enormous. There's so much under the ground, it's, it's crazy. And I remember standing there with Wally at the corner, that first corner when you come in from up top, and we, we just thought, man, let's, let's get on it. And Wally and I leaped like two stags, which is a male deer, also known as a stud. We leaped and landed on the cornerstone, you remember that, right? And the power of God hit us, and we're standing there holding on to each other, and the power of God is just raining on us. What is under the ground is significant. You look at a large tree, what's under the ground is what's going to hold the tree. So, so many people don't have an elementary understanding of what, what really is Christianity. And so they've come and they've got some leadership teaching maybe. You need to get involved and go to our Discover track and get plugged into what's called foundations. So there's a couple different books that we're now using. It's important. And so what I'm about to teach you actually is from elementary school. You're like, I, I never heard it. I know. It's because it needs to be taught. The judgment seat of Christ each believer, every single one. He said, what about the unbelievers? We'll talk about them. There's five judgments. Each believer, those who've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, repented of their sin, received Jesus, believed in their heart, confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be, shall be saved from damnation, from a hellfire. But all of us are still going to be judged. And so every single believer is going to stand before Jesus to give an account for themselves. And at that place, that Bema seat, it's, there, there's an erroneous idea in Christianity that there's a day of reckoning. It's not just one day. There's a multiple, multiple judgments that come. There's a great right throne of judgment. In fact, let me read it to you if you want to write it down. There's a judgment of believers, which I'm talking about now. There's a judgment of Gentile nations. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 25. There's a judgment of national Israel found in Daniel 9, Revelation 20. There's a judgment of the wicked dead. What is wicked dead? Well, it's not righteous dead. Wicked, it's the, the wicked people who have, dead, have died. There'll be a judgment for them. Then there's a judgment of Satan and his fallen angels. There's multiple judgments, 
But understand clearly, I don't think I like this, Pastor. I don't think I like hearing a message about judgment because I, 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 I just don't like that. I, I, am I going to be really judged? Oh, you're going to be judged. And it'd be better to hear now. Shock me now rather than shock me later, Lord. Show me now. Show me now if there's anything going on that's going to affect me and my millennial assignment. See, some of you don't understand. I'm getting ahead of myself because I can't help it. I can't help it. Some of you don't understand that you're saved by grace. This is going to sting. It's going to sting right now. Are you ready? Come on, say it. I'm saved by grace. You're rewarded according to your work. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, get a job. So you're saved by grace, but you're rewarded and your assignment will come by how faithful you are. Did you know, I was thinking about you, did you know there's a, there's a crown getting into rewards, which I, I can't cover all this today. I have, I have no plans on doing that. But at the same time, do whatever you want to do, Lord. There's a crown called the, 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 the winner's crown, the soul winner's crown. Did you know that? I don't like talking about rewards. You don't get a reward so you can strut around and show off your little awards so that you're better than everybody else in hell. That's not even how that is. All of us, all of us will stand before what's called the judgment seat. It's also called the Bema seat. Familiar term to some of you. And it really is an evaluation. Anybody ever got a job evaluation? Some of you should have. <laughs> you ever got a job evaluation? So, you know, you got your yearly evaluation and they go over and they're like, well, you're late pretty much a third of the time. So that you need to work on that. And, you know, we're, we're glad for how you've done this and how you've done this and how you've done this. But, you know, it was re- you were reported for some sexual harassment and um, very concerned about that. So we're going to send you to forgive. It's an evaluation. But all in all, you're going to get a 3% raise or the cost of living increase. It's an evaluation. So when you stand before the judgment seat, it's an evaluation of what you did with your life. You say, why is that important? Because it makes every single second of your life worth something now. Right now. Oh, I saw some phones go away right there. Like, I think I need to text later. You know, that's right. Text later, snap later, insta later. Romans 14.10, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14, pardon me, verse 10. Romans 14, verse 12. Then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. 2 Corinthians 5.10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Each one may receive the things done in the body, whether according to what he has done, whether good or bad. What? What do you mean good or bad? So, because in my mind, when I first got saved, I thought, whoa, all of that's behind me. My sin is in the sea of forgetfulness. La, 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 Right? Isn't that exciting? Come on, that's why it's called good news. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Okay, but you're going to be judged for what you did with your life after you got saved. <laughs> you know, I, I've got a, a cleaning. I, I guess I, for whatever reason, uh, my teeth, I, I produce a lot of plaque, I guess. And my wife's like, don't talk about that. It's too late. <laughs> and so I'm required to get a, t- a teeth clean. Everybody's like, so you didn't brush, did you? Huh? You got like sweaters and stuff. Ew. You're going to be judged for not brushing your teeth. You've defiled many. You need to. <laughs> so I got to go every 90 days and, and they do a cleaning. It's just part of the deal I got to do. And uh, thankful for that. So there's, there's, I've missed my appointment. Don't look at my teeth. Look at your own. I've missed my appointment. Three times, I think. And it's because Pastor Karen usually is my, she's my reminder of those things, but apparently I have to, other appointments I'm pretty good at, but that one, she helps me. Uh, She helps me with lots of things. More than I can mention. 
and I've missed that. How many of you ever missed an appointment? And you know, if you, if you miss it, then you get charged, right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's an appointment that you won't miss. There's an appointment you won't be late for. There's an appointment coming soon. There's a soon coming appointment for you where you and I will stand before the Lord in judgment. Now, the, 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 the timing of the judgment. Seems to be after the judgment seat, seems to be after the rapture. But we could really get into a whole ball of wax. We start going about pre, mid, post. I'm pan. What does that mean? It's going to pan out. I just know that I'm going to stand before the judgment seat. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but it does appear to be after the rapture and before the second coming of Christ. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Discover Track, get involved in. We have a whole class on the book of Revelation. Minister Barry teaches that. You, you need to know the word. I said, you need to know the word. So there's an appointment of the judgment seat of Christ, and you're not going to miss that. And the, the text talks about this foundation, no other foundation. There's only one foundation, and that's the foundation of Jesus Christ. Without that, without being born again, you have no foundation. I don't care what kind of gift mix you have or how well, how well you can plaster or how well you can paint. I don't care how well you can teach or how well you can administrate, how, how well you can speak, talks. Some of you don't talk so good. The evaluation is going to come whether you talk goods or not. Now, the, the foundation comes from receiving Jesus, and there's these rewards. Now, I want to just go down. There's different types of, of rewards. In fact, I think there's 18 different re rewards. Why would God even do that? Well, think about Think about what you do for your kids. You know, I was sending Hannah off. We're at, the, we're at the airport, and I'm, you know, I'm crying. And uh, I'm crying. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of her. But here, go, here goes my girl. You know, she's, and she went off to college, but this one was different. Because now she's moved. You've got to exchange her license and say goodbye to the PFD. And she's, she's, she's left Alaska. And she's in the perfect will of God. That I know. Because otherwise, hell would have froze before she got on the plane. How do you know? Because I'm her father. That's how I know. Oh, I know. That's what the whole summer was about for her, was seeking God, praying, and doing the next thing that God would say. A lot of, a lot of people will go off half-cocked. You just got to, don't just stand there. Do something. Some of you don't just need to do something. You need to stand there until you understand the divine assignment. God spoke. That was really good right there. She, God spoke to her. She knew this is what she, and she had told us, this is what I feel like God. So we prayed through, and then bam, insane favor. I mean, a, an incredible job coming out of college, which we're all like, whoa. Moved her, moving expenses, you know, all the corporate awesomeness of a great job, and we know that God gave it to her. So as I'm sending her off, I'm, I'm weeping because, you know, it's my daughter, but at the same time, I'm filled with joy. And I know she has money. I know how much money she has. And I know she's getting a bunch of money for moving. But as I'm, as I'm weeping and she's crying on Pastor Karen, I just want to do something. So I went to my wallet. And I pulled out cash. And I'm like, oh, go with God. She just want to play. She didn't need it. Why would I do that? Listen, you don't need a reward. God does it because it's just his way of saying, I saw when you turned the other cheek. I saw when that happened and they ripped you off of the jewelry sales. I saw all of that, says the Lord, and I'm going to reward you. Oh, I saw when you turned the other. You could have been mean. You were mean, but you repented. And then you could have done some things to people and you didn't. You felt that spirit of slop come all over you. And you turned and you said, no, nope. I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm, I'm going to put my flesh down. I'm going to submit to God. I'm going to, I'm going to resist the devil. I'm going to do my part. And the Lord saw it. He saw it. And when he, when he sees you on that day, you'll be judged, which I'll talk about in a moment. But there's these rewards, which is amazing. I think it's his way of saying that he's proud of you. It's his way of saying he's proud of you. Come on, how many of you got some kids you're proud of? Yeah, I've got some kids I ain't so proud of. Well, pray your ears off. Come on, I'm seeing the back of people's cars, you know, honor roll. 
My kid made the honor roll. And I'm talking about my daughter right now. Do you not see, but do you see my buttons busting? They are, yeah. Yeah, I'm proud. I did, we did our part as best we could, and God knows a lot of errors with that. My God, raising kids is like serious. I had to repent a lot. But she's making her choices now. She's making those choices now, and I'm proud of her. And as a father, I'm just like, yep, and she got a job. I'm telling you. Why? Because I'm made in God's image. When God sees you and you made it, and he's just he's like, man, come on, son. Way to overcome. Hey, here, want to give you that. That's a reward. Way to go, daughter. Hey, there's a crown for you. Come on, son. Oh, oh, I saw when you could have just myrtled people, but you didn't. It makes sense. Come on, somebody say it makes sense. So there's all kinds of rewards. Let's look at this text. Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? I guess that's probably the most important question. That's not on your notes, but it is a very important question. The way your name is in the Book of Life is by repenting of your sin. You're not saved by works. You're saved by faith. You're judged by your works. Matthew 7 and 21 says, Lord, Lord, you know, did we not say in your name, cast out devils in your name, prophesy in your name? He said, get away from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So literally releasing God's power, there's power in his name, and using his name without intimacy and intimate knowledge and being adopted and grafted in is lawlessness, and you'll be judged for it. I never knew you. Knew is a a very powerful term of intimacy in the most holy ways. They knew the, the power of the Lord, but they themselves weren't committed to God. Watch out. Luke 13 talks about that too. All right. A look at the judgment of believers, verse 15. If anyone's work is burned, they will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved as, as through fire. All the people here he's talking about are believers. The Apostle Paul, writing the church at Corinth, is talking about believers. And you must be prepared for that day. In my dream, I knew the end was coming. And I, I, it's from being in church and from reading the word, it just instantly I'm like, oh, God, am I, am I good? Am I good? God, God. Ah. He, showed me a, he showed me a little something, but I think it was more of an assignment that he wants me to take care of before the end, which could be tonight. I don't know. The signs are everywhere. I'm like, Lord, ah. and I kind of went into that moment and then corrected that, and it was everything straight, and I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus in heaven. That's what some of you need to do today. You need to examine your life. This, this is written to believers. There's a judgment of unbelievers. that They're called the wicked dead. You don't want to be in that group. Look at verse 13. If, every, if anyone's work will, each, pardon me, verse 13, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. And I've, I have that dream and the, the, the intensity of, the intensity of it is it's so profound that you can't fool God. You might be able to fool your husband or your wife. You might be able to fool your employer. You can't manipulate God. So he knows, listen, only you and him know whether you have clean shorts on right now. If you're offended by that, that is a line from Reinhardt Bunky. So, except he used the word underwear. Because the priests had to put on this, these holy linen garments. And only the priest and God knew if he had obeyed and put on clean garments. Actually, it's part of the whole reward system is in a new set of threads. We'll get into that later. Our works matter. I said our works matter. What are our works? Our words, Matthew 12. But I say to you, every idle word of men may speak. They'll give an account 
for it in the day of judgment. This is Jesus, Matthew 12, verse 37 now. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Words are not just sounds coming out of your mouth. Words form ideas, communicate ideas. God spoke and created the universe. Job's comforter said to Job rightly, decree a thing and it shall be established. Your words are powerful. Pastor Karen is so sensitive about that, the the raising of our children. You know that expression, oh, I died. She's like, don't say that. You're not allowed to say I died or I wanted to die or I could have killed him. You you don't use those words. Why? Because they have power. I didn't mean it. Their words have power, whether you felt like you meant it or not. Excuse my French. It's not French, I'm pretty sure. Our deeds, Romans 2, 6, you will render each one according to his deeds. It's not what you thought about doing. It's not what you dreamed about doing. It's about what you did. And that, that starts in your thoughts. Come on, you missed a great place to say amen. Whatsoever things are pure, noble, holy, admirable, think on these things. Revelation 20 and verse 12, and I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before the throne. The books were open. Another book was open. It's called the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had. It's in the book of life. Understand, the book opens. It's the book of the book of life. And so he looks in the book of life, and he sees your name, and he says, better get to work. Actually, it's too late at that point. But he sees what you've done. He sees what I've done. This is so intense, Pastor. Well, you know, better hear it now than then. Did I further God's kingdom? Verse 11 and 12, no other foundation which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the end of your life, God will ask you if you made it count. That makes today significant. And 30 seconds from from now, significant. Everything will be tested, verse 13. We're writing your notes now. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it'll be revealed by fire. Whoa. His eyes are burning fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Your works will be exposed, verse 13. Your motives will be exposed. What does that mean? That means what you did, why you did it. Because you can do good things with the wrong heart. You can do God. Don't look at me like that. You can do good things with the wrong motive. You'll be judged. Your motives will be judged. Did I take advantage of God-given time? Are you using the time that God gave you? A number of years ago, can I have keys, please? A number of years ago, uh, as I bring this to my first close, we had a, we had a, uh, an event. Probably need to veil this a little bit. At the event was a man who gave his heart to Jesus. And in following up, we discovered that this particular man in his 30s had stolen the wife. I'm just going to say it that way. Is that okay? I mean, I know she had something to do with it too, but took another man's wife. Both, Both were a part of the church. This is many years ago. So the one, the one, uh, husband came and said, he's taken my wife. He's, he, he. So being confronted, we confronted it because that's what we do. We confront stuff here in love. Certain things really, certain things really get under my skin when I pray through and respond in love. I try to. I've had to repent and blunt it. Just makes me mad. Home wreckers make me mad. Just destroy families, destroy marriage, destroy the kids. So in meeting with them, 
in my office. I said to the man and this woman who's left this other man, I said, now, you're still married to so-and-so, right? She says, yes. I said, and you guys are together? Yes. I said, it's wrong, and you need to stop it right now. I said, well, we don't, we don't want to. We don't want it. I said, I'm sure you don't. But you need to stop, because if you don't, you're going to be in big trouble. Well, they just said to me, well, well, you don't really understand. I said, I understand that you're still married to him, and I understand that you are now together. That's all I need to understand. Stop it, or you're going to head, head for trouble. Well, what ended up happening, they won some big prize at this event. At th- 32 years old, 32, sitting in his bathroom, this guy, after we confronted and confronted and confronted. 32 years old, sitting in his bathroom, has a heart attack, falls over, and dies. Now, I've seen, I've seen too much. You can, try to t- you can try to tell me six ways to Sunday. Oh, God, I don't know. Now, I hope as he was sitting there and his heart started stopping, massive heart attack at 32. I hope he's like, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm taking the best life. I committed his life. Oh. I hope so. That's what it would take, I would think. Are you using the time that God has given you? You'll be judged by what you were given. And I, you know, I, I don't know that I've met anybody with more gifts than Wally Pearson. He, and I'm sure he's cringing by me saying that, but I, it's amazing. It's like a Renaissance man. Do you know, I don't have the gifts that he has. We share some common gifts together. I don't have some of those gifts that he has. And early on in my walk, I would see people who were so, like, amazing. Athletes. You ever seen somebody that's just, like, ridiculously gifted, super fast, handsome, pretty, whatever, fill in all the blanks. Girls are terrible at it. They, they, they like, analyzing each other. You know why they're laughing? Because they know that's true. Comparing. I did that. I did that early on. I don't do it anymore. I got delivered. I used to listen to T.D. Jakes, and I'm like, that's not fair, God. That's not fair. That guy in his zoot suits and everything looks so awesome. Then he takes three verses, or one verse, three words. He takes Jesus wept, brings revival. People stand up, rush the altars. Everybody gets saved. Devils are cast out. He can preach for an hour and a half, and I still want to bring more. Bring me more. That time preaching 15 minutes, I'd hurt people. Preach some jacked up thing that I'd have to repent for. I just want to be like, I want to be like Jake's. I want one of those towel guys. said, you are not T.D. Jakes. I'm like, yeah, I know. It took a while. I will not be judged by the standard that T.D. Jakes will be judged by. He'll be judged by the gifts and the talents and the time that God gave him. I will not be judged according to the gifts that Wally has. I'm going to be judged by the gifts that God gave me. And you will be judged. Come on, you will be ju- You say, like, I don't have that many gifts. Well, whatever gifts you got, I'd highly advise you use them because there's an appointment that you will not be late for. You will be there and God will look at how you use the gifts and the talents that he gave you, not somebody else. And the time that you've used, how you've used it. Mm, yes. Gonna be judged by the righteous judge. Hey. Not gonna be judged by the gifts that you have. opportunities that were given you? What did you do with the gifts that were given you? How did you judge others? Look at E. 
God will save us. You know, but that's, that's a choice. You have to choose. You choose that. You're not a robot. It doesn't just save you because he died on a cross and then you know that and then everybody's saved. No, that's not how that works. You, you need to repent. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. In conclusion, oh, pardon me, too. He rewards us, verse 15. It's really a, a broad stroke of the judgment seat of Christ. And as God gives me installments, I'm going to bring them to you. I know where we're going. We're in the judgment seat. We're going to talk about divine assignments because you have a divine assignment in this life. You have a divine assignment now. I'm on one. Anybody else on their divine assignment? Okay, all 10 hands went up. All of us have a divine assignment and you'll be judged for how you fulfilled that divine assignment. And then you get another one in the millennial reign. And if I understand it correctly, after that you get another one. What's God saying to us very simply this morning as I close? He's saying this. Make your life count for God's sake. Make your life count. Move in faith. And when I say make your life count, I mean grow in the knowledge of God. One of the ways I judge the importance of a dream is the measure of anointing and power on it. And if you don't understand that, stick around. We'll explain it to you at some point. And as I've it's, it, it's dream has been with me every day, various aspects of it, going through it, constantly the Holy Spirit bringing it back to mind, constantly bringing it back. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, seriously, like, are we, are, we, are we so close that, are we so close? Are we that close that I, that I would be so overcome? Listen, I'm a mailman. I, I'm just a man, but I am responsible for this house. And I'm responsible for you before God. And when a dream comes like that, listen, we don't have 52 weeks of preaching that we give you every Sunday and Sunday morning. We're on week 54, 34. We don't do that. I try to plan ahead, but the Holy Spirit comes and blows in my house and wakes me up and gives me dreams and says, preach this. So it's a stirring in me. I sat down to study yesterday. I prayed I prayed through and went over the scriptures. I've got a lot of scripture in me, so I was studying in my spirit and in my mind. Then when I finally sat down to begin to put it together, the first scripture I read, the fire of the Holy Ghost hits me. I can't even stay in my chair. I stood up. I was like, whoa! A rush of God's anointing, His presence. And I said to Pastor Karen, I said, man, this must be really important to God. I said, because he's just arresting me. I had to pace back and forth. Ooh. The end is the beginning. The end. Some of you are living for now. You live for now. That's a painful life. Some of you are evaluating your life based upon what kind of car, what kind of house, what, how much money you make. Some of you are evaluating your life by how many people you got saved. Make sure you don't do that. That's not it. You'll never find that. You'll never find that. You'll never find in Scripture that, eva- that you evaluate yourself on how many people you got saved or how much money you had or how much fame or whether your name was in lights. No. You evaluate your life based upon God's Word and fulfilling the divine assignment that He gave you. Does that include souls? Oh, yes, it does. Does it include finances? I'm sure yes. I used to be so tormented as a younger pastor because I was constantly comparing myself. It was painful. You choose to serve God. You're not a robot. You choose to serve Him. Use the life that you have. Live for God with all your heart because this is a test. This is an internship. And one day, you and I will graduate.
Did you get something? Thanks for listening to this message today. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you realize that you need Jesus as your Savior, and you'd like to pray with me to either commit your life to Jesus for the first time or rededicate your life to the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and bringing me forgiveness. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of them today, and I ask you to cleanse me and wash me of all my sin. I commit to live for you all the rest of the days of my life. And I pray this in your name, Jesus, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, would you text the word SAVED to 907-357-2065? We'd like to send you some information and some materials that will help you in your Christian walk. God bless.